here with Pastor Kyle Bailey uh, at Center Point Church at Burton, Michigan. My good friend, um, man, we met. What was it? I think we met at the Greg Locke Tent Revival. Is that right? I think we re- we 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 either met there and at one of the uh, Strike the Ground events. I don't know which one came first, but I know I I, I met you at both, and and then we began to connect more and more. Yeah. Strike the Ground was good, too, man. That was powerful. Yeah, that was right out. I don't out. remember if that was before or after Greg Locke, though. I think it was before. We had that big tent. Yep. It was out front, right? Yep. Um, yeah, it was It was good. It was a lot of fun. Yep. And, um, at the Ferris wheel is what I'm talking about. I, met, I think I met you at the Ferris wheel, too. Yeah, so we met. So the Lord's yep. been trying to cross our paths for quite yes. some time, anyways, yep. is what we're trying to say. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we met Pastor Cobble. Really, it was the Greg Locke event that really yeah, brought that us really together, yeah. that really opened our eyes to say, man, uh, God's trying to do something here in the region of Flint. Yeah. And not only in Flint, but, you know, throughout the state of Michigan and beyond, you know, it's opened our eyes to what's happening in the body of Christ. And uh, so, yeah, that kind of led to our relationship and got together. And, um, yeah, we're uh, looking at, you know, working together here in the future in a couple weeks. Yeah. And um, it's going to be the kingdom kingdom breakthrough, uh, healing, and deliverance. And so yes. it's going to be a little different than most events. You know, I think that this, this one we really wanted to gear towards equipping. And so yeah. not just about uh, healing and deliverance as far as um, the ministry side, which that's going to be as well, but also equipping people to operate in the, the callings. And, um, you know, one thing that, you know, for me, the Lord kind of threw me into the deliverance ministry. It's not something that I really wanted to do, not something that I asked to do. Um, But I want to talk to you and and ask you, like, how did you feel like the Lord had called you into deliverance? Or how how did you get involved in this, man? So I was called into the ministry in 2008 and uh, did not know anything. Went to Bible college, went to a charismatic Word of Faith Bible college, learned learned a lot about the Word. There wasn't many classes on deliverance there, but I did get originally connected with Derek Prince through a friend of mine, put me in contact with some of his materials. And I was reading some of his just foundations of faith stuff, thought he was great. And one night I'd listened to a teaching he did on deliverance and I thought it was kind of strange because I'd never really understood it. I was like, why are we doing this? You know, we're Christians. I don't know how this works for a Christian. And he was talking about renouncing stuff and and, and then exhaling demons and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to try it because I respected Derek Prince. So I was like, I'm going to try this. This feels weird. I'm like exhaling stuff and hoping I'm getting set free of something. And I did feel like a little bit of release. And I was like, that was weird. And I didn't know how to make sense of it theologically. And so that was back in like 2009, man, like long time ago. Wow. And and I kind of forgot about it. Went off onto other stuff. And, and when someone would either reach out to the church for like a home cleansing uh, or maybe they have a child that got in, involved in the, in like Ouija boards and stuff, we would go and, and, and do some form of deliverance on both the home and the person. And we would see, you know, very surface level deliverance take place. And I would walk out over there thinking, wow, great. That was awesome. You know, I never really understood it. I would usually lead them to the Lord afterwards. Cause I figured they were not saved <laughs> if they had a demon. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, so I would deal with deliverance whenever it would arrive at my doorstep. So at the altar, or maybe if I would preach and, you know, someone would manifest, but I never knew how to really explain it. I just kind of followed the instructions of Jesus and took authority, cast out, and moved on. So uh, I did not get deeply involved into deliverance until um, May of last year. Yeah. Um, Actually, it was just prior to Greg Locke because my friend Adam Morris was bringing Greg Locke to Flint. And I thought, well, let me look into this so that I can be prepared because I heard that Adam was getting some pushback from people and stuff. And so I I wanted to be supportive to him. I wanted to kind of understand so that I could because I wanted to share something online that would bring some balance to the discussion. So I did a little research, got my eggs and my ducks in a row and then and then made a post supporting Adam, and then we did the event. And at the event, Greg Locke did, Greg Locke did a mass deliverance, which I immediately remembered the recorded mass deliverance that I had watched from Derek Prince back in 2009, and I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot about this. Wow. And I, I think I did deliverance on about 20 people that night. Yeah. And what was great is that the water of the word kind of turned into wine for me, 
So there was all of these teachings that I had over here and over there and over here and over there that were like, like, like in my spirit that I had never really connected them all. And so as I was doing deliverance on 15 or 20 people at once, <laughs> I was kind of going through a school of the Holy Spirit Yeah, and on. just like, and, and discerning spirits, casting them out. And I'm like, Afterwards, I'm like, that was weird. You would look at this person in the eyes and they would be eyes dilated, darkness. And then I'd pray for them. I'd put my hand on them. I'd ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? I'd start identifying what it was, dealing with it. Then I'd look at the same person. They'd have a glow in their eyes. Come on. And I thought, wow, that's powerful. And I thought, this is crazy. I, I We should do more of this in the church. <laughs> Come on. And man. I just felt so silly because I'm like, man, I've been connected with people like Derek Prince and others who do deliverance for many years, but I never really dug into that area because I was just, I don't know. I'm a builder. I'm apostolic in my anointing. And so I'm always reading and learning stuff about how to build a new Testament church. I'm not really thinking about, I was never really thinking a whole lot about the little nuances of how this subject works and the nuances. I'm very big picture yeah, and so forth. So I just never had went down those rabbit trails, but God, began to immediately bring us people. When I would start preaching, they would start manifesting. I'm like, what in the world is going on? And then they would start calling in. Somehow people figured out we do deliverance or maybe yeah, God yeah. was just organically sending them to us. I was doing like five deliverances a week, like long, like two hour deliverance meetings in my office here. We have a school, we have a daycare, we have like 300 people who go here. So I'm very busy yeah. trying to pass through the church, run the school, the daycare. And so I'm like, man, I can't do deliverance every day and be the pastor of this church. So we're going to have to do group deliverance. Yeah. So that's when we started doing breakthrough nights. Yep. And all the while I'm reading, rereading every book on deliverance that I ever knew about. And at the same time, going through a school of the Holy Spirit. And then I have this strange thought one day. I thought, okay, all these people are good, godly people. Many of them, there was... I remember in a three-week span, we did deliverance with like 40 people in our congregation, like one-on-one -on -one intense deliverance. It was crazy, dude. Mm. So I started to realize these are people that I know and I see their walk. They're godly. They're good people. They just had some critters in their basement that needed to get dealt with, right? Yeah. And I'm starting to think, well, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I must have yeah. something. Because one thing that I struggled with over the years was anger. Um, I thought that I just had like maybe just from my upbringing or maybe from my, uh, maybe my ancestors, maybe I had, uh, you know, uh, inherited a bent in that direction. And I just needed to be more intentional about crucifying the flesh in that area. Right. And I'd get pretty good at it for a while. But then all of a sudden in a weak, vulnerable moment, I would blow up into anger. And so I actually watched a YouTube video that was a self-deliverance YouTube video, and I got delivered from the spirit of anger and several other things that I didn't even know about. And then my wife started to see the transformation in me, and she started thinking, well, maybe I need some deliverance. And so we did deliverance with her, and she got set free of some things. And then we oh. went, and we were like, okay, well, maybe we could, because we had both gotten inner healing before. Right. But I really believe if you don't couple inner healing and deliverance together, you don't gain a whole lot of ground. You do, but you kind of don't at the same time. So then we went through inner healing and like our marriage is just going through the clouds, you know, Come after on, all of that, where, Come on. where I do believe we had a good marriage. And I think Amanda would attest to that as well, but it was a lot of work. Yeah. Right. We were having to, to try really hard. And, and as I look back on it, I'm like, shouldn't be that hard. I mean, it's hard, <laughs> but it shouldn't be like, an uphill battle every moment. And that's because there were demonic influences that had, had come in through open doors that we were, we were treating it like it was a flesh issue, but it was a spiritual issue. Come on. And if it's a flesh issue, you should be able to crucify it through biblical discipline, through Christian discipline fairly readily. And it shouldn't be the, the, the fight of your life. Like reckon yourself dead, read the word of God daily feed on the word, strengthen your spirit, man, and you're usually good to go. Bring some, Maybe bring some accountability into your life if you need it. Usually with most, most issues, you can do well with just those tools. Right. But when there's something that you've done, accountability, you've done, I read the word, I pray every day, I'm doing everything I know to do Christian, and it doesn't go away, it's likely demonic. 
Yeah. And you don't have to live under its grip. You can just take authority, renounce it, and cast it out. Come and on. so that's what we did. <laughs> and that's what we keep doing now. Come on, man. So that's... I hope that answered your question. Yeah, man. No, that's awesome. And, you know, I just wanted to share, too, you know, really, I'll never forget at the Greg Lock. You know, we'll go back to that for a minute because that's really, I think, how with this whole uh, the, the flame as far as um, bringing the awareness to what's happening in the region. And I'll never forget that night. Same thing as you. I mean, I didn't know what happened. All of a sudden, he got up, <laughs> preached this anointed message about great. deliverance and power, yeah. and then he just started to go in and started to cash things out from the top. And if you weren't there, uh, you yeah. have no idea what happened. Yeah. And so as a minister of the gospel, and, and as my heart, you know, I said, I knew about deliverance. I thought, I'd, like you said, I knew about deliverance. Yeah. I thought I was casting out demons. I was doing what I knew to do. Yeah. Um, but then when he started to do that, all of a sudden, everybody around us started to manifest. Everyone. And it was, I mean, you're talking 700 people in a tent. and In the in the rain, too. In the rain. Yeah. And, um, I mean, people just, I mean, it was real deal stuff. And protesters. And so, and, yeah, and <laughs> protesters. And and one of, I think one of the pro- protesters had manifested and got delivered God, by, no. from what I heard. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, but I just remember, you know, I just remember looking at my fellow man and looking at somebody next to me who was a Christian or, you know, the, I don't know at if they're least Christian a, or not. At least a professing Christian. At least Christian. a professing Christian. And yeah. they're on the ground crying for help. And you can see that they needed help. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, either I'm going to A, ignore it, B, say that it's not real, mm. or C, help that person, get that person set free. Mm. And so what Come am on. I going to do? As a Christian, I feel like it's my responsibility and obligation to help that person. That's good. And so after that, getting that person set free, I had a lot of people. I said, okay, this stuff's real. Like, this is the real deal. Like, we need to help these people. And I'll never forget <laughs> getting all this kickback from other Christians and other people saying, well, demons aren't real and Christians can't have demons. And I'm like, uh, it changes the game when you're actually looking at somebody in front of you that needs help, that uh, what are you going to do? I mean, I want to help them. Yeah. So whatever it looks like, let's get them set free. Amen. And, you know, and I think that was really our heart behind it. Say, okay, this is real. We need to bring awareness to the body of Christ that, yeah, there are demonic forces that come in between us that are, you know, they're stagnating our walk with Christ, you yeah. know, it really. And so that's really, you know, how I, we kind of came together. Yeah. And um, so you had that experience. You got delivered from that um, that spirit of lust, or not lust, it was anger. Anger. You and got and other things, Freemasonry, found out about Come on. Freemasonry in my background yeah. and just things like that, spirit of infirmity in my in my stomach that I had dealt with, just crazy stuff. And, and also seeing God, because I've always prayed for the sick and I've usually... I usually would get maybe two out of 10 people would get healed on a good day. Yeah. And then after then learning the uh, the deliverance piece, yeah, that, that number began to go up significantly as well. And so we began to recognize that physical healing and deliverance goes together, inner healing and deliverance go together. And so it was like, man, this is a key that we need to use and it will unlock heaven. You know, I believe the keys of the kingdom open the windows of heaven into people's lives and the open doors in the, in the spiritual realm. And so I, I just believe understanding deliverance opens a new aspect of the inheritance into our life really is what it, it's all about. And so that's a big bomb that I just dropped there, that's but a, it's so a, key. Come on, man. It's so key because a big deal. everything I ever knew about spiritual warfare, all I needed, all I needed to do was understand that the tools for deliverance that I would use for someone who was wor- messing with a Ouija board or someone who would come to the altar and manifest or someone who was hearing voices in their house late at night, I just needed to apply that more readily to a, a wider range of people. Come on, man. And so just as much as messing with tarot cards or going to get a psychic reading may open doors to the demonic in the person's soulish realm, not in their spirit, Right. Uh, so can unforgiveness. So can generational iniquities. So can uh, other things that open doors. Pornography and so and so. Everybody likes to think that the demonic only comes in through the occult, but it comes in through things that many Christians engage in: pornography, yeah, mm-hmm. unforgiveness, bitterness, uh, uh, traumatic experiences from their past. All of those different kinds of things can be real open doors. And we never teach that a Christian can be possessed by a demon a because a, a, every, every person is made up of a spirit, a soul and a body. And we teach that the enemy can develop strongholds in the person's soul. And those strongholds become uh, uh, areas of operation in the person's life. And so deliverance is where we're emptying strongholds of the demon. And then through discipleship and Christian discipline, we're d- demolishing the stronghold. Wow, that's a very good explanation. So if you're asking, so basically what Pastor Kyle is saying is that Christians can 
have demons doesn't mean you're possessed, right? But you can have a demon um, in your. It, it's it's through your soul. Yeah. And so and the yeah. soul is the Greek word psyche, which deals with our mind, will, and emotions. Come on. Not with our spirit, man. That that's when we receive Christ, our spirit comes alive. Yes. And we're born again, and the Holy Spirit comes to live in our inner man. And that is where God is. That's not where the enemy is. And so f- through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us, we can be renewed in the spirit of our mind and get delivered from demonic influences. Come on, man. <laughs> that right there, bro. That's powerful, ain't it? And so what I've that learned... That was a huge eye-opener for me. I was like, man, how did I not see this? And if you're watching this today, and here's the number one thing, and I'm sure Kyle will attest to this, is that and once, if you remember earlier, he said, once people started to hear that he was doing deliverance, people started to come. Because the one thing that I notice is that I, I talk to people and I tell them, you're not crazy. Like, okay, you're hearing voices in your head. Uh, most of the world or anybody that doesn't have this understanding of the demonic would say, you're just crazy. Well, you're not crazy. Yeah. Uh, you need deliverance. Yeah. And a lot of the times, just me telling that to people brings a peace and say, okay, wow, I'm yeah. not crazy. There is help available. Yeah. And then they get deliverance and they're like, wow. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it on their face over and over. They're like, man, I've struggled with this for years. Yes. And I read my Bible. I went to a church every Sunday. And, and I was the pastor of the church who was like, nah, you know, deliverance is good, but it's not for everyone, is it? You know, and like God has just helped me to see that this subject is more nuanced. And and if we can really understand it biblically, it can just enable us to help more people, you know. And I used to work in rehabs, working with people who were who were suffering from addiction. And I remember one time I was doing a counseling appointment with a guy who, who I knew was baptized in the Holy Spirit because I had prayed over him. And he told me, he said, I really think I need deliverance from evil spirits. And I thought, okay, this was probably five years ago. And I I didn't, like, he was insistent. So I was like, I don't know how that works, but I'll pray for you. I laid my hand on it. He went into a, he went into a coughing fit for like 10 minutes. And then he got up off the floor and was like, I feel so much better now. And I remember going home and I was like, what in the world? How does that work? (laughs) <laughs> and I just kind of tucked it away because I had so much on my plate as a pastor. And that may be where many pastors are is like they, they're they going from appointment to appointment. They went to Bible college. They got all their foundations laid. They have their sermon they're having to prepare every week. They're in the word of God. And maybe they just haven't had time to get into this subject and really try to connect the dots to make sense of it. Because I believe every pastor has come into those scenarios that I'm talking about where you encounter something and afterwards you're scratching your head saying that doesn't really jive with my theology where really well but it it happened wow you know what I'm saying yes and so over time the area of ignorance that the enemy was using to keep my ministry from being more like the ministry of Jesus Ooh, God removed on. that area of ignorance in my life there's probably areas of ignorance right now as you and I are speaking that when God, when I'm ready for him to give me revelation in that area, he will so that my ministry can be more consistent with the ministry of Christ. That's a big statement. <laughs> I, I wanted my ministry to become more like the ministry of Jesus. Yeah, man. Ouch. That always you know? used to and, mess with me. But it's the truth, you know, and, and we read in the Bible over and over, like nobody can deny the scriptures say Jesus went from place to place, preaching the kingdom, healing the sick, casting out demons, preaching the kingdom, healing the sick. Casting out demons. I mean, he did it over and over and over. And, um, you know, that's what really got my eyes open. I'm like, okay, well, I'm supposed to be doing, I'm supposed to be an ambassador of Christ. I want to be help people. Ultimately, I want to love God and love people. What does loving God look like? My relationship with him, first and foremost. Second, loving people, hey, helping people to get set free, come right? Come on. I mean, if, I, if it was me and I was in demonic oppression, I would want somebody to come and help me. Yes. And so that's what it's all about. It's all about love, you know, love and relationship with, with God. Yeah. And, you know, if anything's hindering my relationship with God, I want to get that thing out. So let me, t- let me go back. And you were saying that there's areas of our life, you know, so I, I, I always said that any area of your life that's not surrendered to the Holy Spirit allows access to these demonic influences to start attacking you in that area. Yeah. And so um, what would you say after somebody gets delivered? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, what would you do? Take them through a process. So, uh, okay, yeah. you just got delivered from demons. You're feeling great. Now what do we do? Yeah. Now what? Ooh, that's good. It's different for every person, but there are general principles. Yeah. And like I was saying, the enemy gets access to a person through a stronghold. Second Corinthians chapter 11 talks about strongholds, and they 
ultimately are thoughts that oppose the knowledge of God. So these are thoughts that, and these are structures of thinking that op- oppose the truth of God's word. And those structures over time, external demonic forces get you to think a certain way so it creates a space in your life that they can come and occupy. And so deliverance is really just removing the occupant from mm. the structure. And then post-deliverance, which is through renewing the mind, That's key. we begin to remove the structure of lies that that demonic entity was operating through. And that's so important. That's more important than... That's kind of more important <laughs> than the deliverance. Right. You know? Yes. And you can demolish strongholds. Man, I had demolished every stronghold about the fact that anger was not an appropriate behavior as a Christian to operate in, unless it was the anger of the Lord, which is rare. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm not one to think every time I'm angry, well, that was righteous indignation. I'm, I usually <laughs> assume that it was me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And, but so I had, I had done a lot of work in that area post or pre deliverance to where, when I got delivered of anger, I was like, man, that was a relief. I had, I don't want to be angry, you know, but then there might be a person who didn't have all that where they did a lot of, work leading up to the deliverance where they've maybe never even done any work at all and they get deliverance. Well, now the work starts not doing works to get saved, but works to renew your mind so that you can think saved. And that's cool. different. You're, you, you can be saved in your spirit, but not be thinking saved in your mind. And I think that that's what it's all about. And that's why church community is so important because that, what does church community do for the new believer, especially? Come well, on. It helps them read their Bible. Right. It helps them learn how to develop a prayer life. We're supposed come to come on. alongside that person and help them learn those tools and that kind of stuff. Then there's also areas in their in their um, in the deep parts of their mind. Ephesians four talks it talks about the spirit of our mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind uh, and put on the new self. I believe that these are thought patterns and sometimes areas of wounding and hurt that we we received in our early developmental areas of our life. And that's what we mean by inner healing. Mm. We're talking about God who binds up the brokenhearted, the Bible says. So God will also do more than just surface level renewing of the mind where he gives you insight and knowledge of his word, but he'll also take you through encounter experiences with his Holy Spirit to go deep into the recesses of your mind and actually deal with areas of wounding that are festering areas of darkness that the light needs to penetrate to to heal your heart so that there's no roots for the enemy to get deep into your soul. So that's why I think a lot of people would benefit from inner healing either prior to or after deliverance. I think inner healing or heart healing, I call it, is connected with deliverance. And sometimes a person's inner healing can lead to their deliverance. And sometimes a person's deliverance can lead to their inner healing. Cool. And so you just have to be sensitive as to what which, where that person's at. Bro, and that's why I love you, Pastor Kyle. Because <laughs> I it's, love you too. Because it's about, you know, it, it's it's not relying on self. Yeah. It's relying on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And every person is different. And so you have one person that comes and this person that comes and they're all different. They all are at all different walks. Yes. And we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And because ultimately he's the one that knows how this person needs to be free, whether it's inner healing or deliverance or mind renewal or whatever. The, you know, there's all these different... I always looked at it as different tools in our tool belt. You know, the more that we know knowledge, since I'm not ignorant of deliverance, that has now opened up an arsenal where I can help this person in that area. I know how to pray for the sick. Okay, there's another, you know what I mean? These different tools that the Holy Spirit can operate through us to ultimately help that other person. Yeah. Right? Man, I love that. Um, Powerful. So let me ask you this, man. So you came through the stream. You mentioned Derek Prince. Yes. Um, So... Tell me more, because um, I know Derek Prince, like to me, um, if you don't know, I, Lester Summerall was a spiritual father to me. Yeah. And so coming through the lineage of Lester Summerall, he was really big on casting out demons. Yeah. And I didn't really know much about Derek Prince until I got up. Actually, I think it was you started talking to me about yeah. him. And I'm like, I started listening to him. So they got a little different techniques. A little bit, yeah. But ultimately, the same result is that we want to get people set free. Yes. And so tell me about, um, you know... Derek Prince a little bit, you know. Yeah, Derek Prince, uh, I got connected with him through a mentor of mine because I was still in Bible college and I was wanting to have good foundations. And Derek Prince has some very good foundational material, especially for those who are charismatic and Pentecostal. And he seems to be very balanced in that kind of stuff. So I've always had a a great 
um, uh, level of respect for him. Plus, he lived in Jerusalem, and he had a heart for the people of Israel, and I have that as well. So I've really gravitated towards him in that regard as well, and he has a lot of good material on helping the Christian to understand the role that Israel plays in God's end-time plan. And I think Christians need to understand that because we're called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let those who love her be secure. So those things are powerful. He was in World War II, and he got saved in World War II. He was a, he was a philosopher. Uh, he was a professor of philosophy at Cambridge. So th- that's what really stuck out to me. Like he's this intellectual that not only gets saved in World War II, but becomes a Pentecostal <laughs> and a, del- a, a man who does deliverance. And so I read his story, and I thought it was so interesting how his was similar to what we experienced last last year. His story began with just having church, and in the middle of his preaching, someone on the front row of his church manifested a demon. It happened to be the church piano player. Wow. So I guess watch out, worship leaders. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but that... They did deliverance for this lady, and he went through the school of the Holy Spirit just like God had t- taken me through. Yeah. And... Next thing you know, people just start showing up. I never put a sign up. Hey, we're doing deliverance. People were showing up, and we had so many people asking for deliverance, I had to hold a service. Wow. And so we started holding services. Now we hold services every month. It was every two months. Now it's every month. And there was a time where I was doing it almost every Wednesday night. But that's what happened with him. And and people just began to come to him saying, how do you do this? Help me. We're having people manifest demon in our congregation. And so Derek Prince began to take everything he was learning through the school of the Holy Spirit and just put it into writing to help people. And so that's why his book, They Shall Expel Demons, has been probably the best-selling book on demonology in the, the history of modern Christianity. And it's very readable, very easy. There's a lot of good books on deliverance from Lester Summerall, from Derek Prince, uh, some of the more uh, recent uh, deliverance ministers like Alexander Pagani has some good stuff. So yeah, I've I've always had a. There's been a lot of kind of kindred spirit between me and and just my background in reading his 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 one book that I read by him that changed my life forever is called Changing History Through Prayer and Fasting. I probably read that 15 years ago, wow. and I was never the same person. I became an intercessor. I understood that I was an intercessor and never knew it, and and so his book changed my life in that regard. And so for me to be able to come full circle and find help from the deliverance materials that he wrote was a, a huge blessing. But now I've expanded out and read a lot of different things from Elijah House, from Bethel, Sozo, different ma- materials that are out there that all take different approaches to deliverance, but I think we don't have to throw one away and pick up the other. And, you know, a lot of times you get where uh, maybe because someone was deeply touched by Bethel Sozo, they'll never read Derek Prince. Or someone who was deeply touched in Alexander Pagani mass deliverance, they'll never read Isaiah Salvador's stuff or whatever. No, like everybody is carrying a certain measure of revelation that if we can pull all of that together, we can really get the full breadth of what God has to share on this subject, I believe. So I'm all about diversify in your understanding. Don't get too married to one formula or to one approach, but but find where God is at work in all of those approaches and know them and have them in your tool bag and then be led by the Spirit. It's so tempting, like I'm sure with you doing healing, I've had this happen, like I one time I prayed for this guy's back and he his back uh, wouldn't get healed, so I commanded his back to be healed, and his back got healed. And I realized there was something spiritual there preventing the healing. Mm-hmm. It would be easy for me to say, oh my gosh, that worked. And now the next person who comes to me with their back needing heal, now I've got a formula. Right. And then I command their back to heal, get healed, and they doesn't get healed. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with my formula? It's because we're not supposed to be led by formulas. We're supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. And so what worked for him might be an entirely different strategy with someone else. And I always need to have good information from good ministers of the gospel that I'm aware of and that I'm familiar with that I can draw from as the Holy Spirit leads. And so we do that with deliverance too. It's it, There are good formulas and good scripts and there are good guardrails that you can use for deliverance, but you can't be so tied to them that now you've, now you've uh, made the Holy Spirit come into this little box that we've created. 
for him to operate in. Come on, man. Anyways. Yeah. That is, man, I, I always said too, you know, you can't judge scripture by your experiences. You have to judge your experiences by scripture. Amen. And so, you know, even if I see something that works one way and it like was totally, I, I can't see that in scripture, but it did get the person set free. I'm not going to make a doctrine out of that experience yeah. because it's so easy for us as humans to do that, right? But God, you know, I love in the Bible how Jesus, whenever he did a miracle, it was never the same. It yeah. was always different. Yeah, it was. And so he's always like, okay, just because it happened this way doesn't mean this way. One time it was a mud in the eyes. Another time it was, you know, as you go, as you prayed. There was another time he cast a spirit out. There's another time he <laughs> spoke the word. I mean, Jesus was constantly being led by whatever the Holy Spirit wanted him to do. He was yes. whatever the Father was telling him to do. Yes. And, you know, that's what I really love too, especially um, about our group of guys that we have in this healing and deliverance um, conference that we have coming up is not all of us believe 100% the same way, right. but we can honor the Holy Spirit in that person. Person. That's right. And so just because Kyle does it one way and Dion does it another way and, and I do it a different way, ultimately our heart is that we want to see people equipped, encouraged, yeah. and set free to walk in everything Jesus paid for them to walk in. And Amen. so that's what I love, man, about the, about being able to just honor each other and not come against each other yes. and say, look, he does it that way, praise God. Yeah, if it's bearing fruit, i am got to celebrate. You come know? on, man. <laughs> Come on. Let's and if go. it's working, I want to sh- share notes with me. What What's working? Maybe I can add something else to my toolbox that I don't know about. Yeah. And and it may come in use. Maybe something that you share with me tomorrow, five years from now, I run into a situation that God reminds me of it. And I'm able yeah. to use it, you know? So I think it's huge. That's being led by the Spirit. Come on, man. And, uh, you know, so one thing, too, that connected us together, man, is, um, you know, Miles Monroe. Oh, yeah. Revelation on the kingdom, Come on man. now. You already know, man. You hey. Know, the kingdom, man. And that's, <laughs> you know, that that's my heart, you know, and that's really, you know, I think that this whole weekend is going to be geared towards the kingdom and then also what happens when you preach the kingdom. And that's really what this is all about, guys. Healing and deliverance, equipping the body of Christ to operate in the kingdom principles. Yes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so at the healing conference or at the healing and deliverance conference, I'm going to be on Friday. I'm yep. going to do Friday night. And then we got Saturday. So walk me through what you think is going to happen on Saturday, the progression. Because there's going to be a progression to this. And I wanted to give you guys a little heads up because you might be thinking, ah, maybe that's not for me. Maybe that is for me. But I wanted to encourage you to let you know that wherever you're at on your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, um, this is going to equip you and encourage you to become better soldiers, better Christians. That's really more yeah. information and more knowledge because we know the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, I don't want to preach, but my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so we want to bring awareness to spiritual warfare. We want to bring awareness to this other realm that we're living in right now and help equip you with tools so that way you can be equipped and encouraged. So that being said, yeah. Friday night, I'm going to talk about the kingdom, but then Saturday is going to be a day full of equipping, like yes. totally equipping. So Run me through what you yeah. see that. What do you so, see happening, man? Uh, those watching may know Pastor Dion from Flint Driven Church. We yeah. know he he operates powerfully in the evangelistic side of things. And so I think, and I know he operates in faith too. So I see him bringing that to the table in terms of like, there's going to be each piece is going to build on the next to where we can understand deliverance in evangelistic context, understand the importance of faith in, in, the, in the midst of this bigger conversation about deliverance. Yours, I think, is going to be key because really a lot of people need to understand that div- deliverance is simply something that's connected with the ministry of preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. That when we preach the kingdom, these signs follow. Amen. And so that's what it's all about. That's why it's the Kingdom Breakthrough Conference. Then you have Scott Reed, who has trained pretty much all the altar workers I know, <laughs> really good at that spiritual diagnostic side of thing, getting yeah. into the the nuances of deliverance and how to handle different kinds of situations, how to use good etiquette, like things that could help the person who's never done deliverance be able to have longevity in their deliverance ministry. Because if, oh, if you cross certain lines, I think it can be devastating. And so I think that's going to be very helpful Ryan Glesman from uh, Community Church of God in Clio is another evangelist, but brings a whole different vibe. And he walks in a healing anointing, just like yeah. you do. And so I think that, that we're going to get to see a lot of the the aspects of deliverance that manifest in physical healing in the body and so on and so forth. And then that evening, where I'm going to teach on deliverance. Very similar to what we've been talking about here, except more in depth, giving scriptural proofs for it, and then inviting people who want deliverance to actually receive deliverance Saturday night. And then we have planned Sunday night to do an open panel discussion 
Uh, we're going to worship, do an open panel discussion, because even with all the sessions we have planned, we're not yeah, going to be able to cover everything. There's no way. And so everybody who comes to the conference is going to be able to write questions down and submit them for us to be able to discuss at the uh, open panel discussion. And so after we're done kind of answering this different questions that we weren't able to get to in the conference together as a panel, then we're going to have a, a prayer and impartation time because the Bible says that we can lay hands on people and impart spiritual gifts to strengthen them. And so we want to be able to not just, just administer deliverance or teach on deliverance, but also impart the anointing that people need to flow in that ministry um, through the laying on of hands. Come on. It's going to be good. It's going to be power packed. So real quick, to to piggyback off what Kyle was just saying about the anointing and laying out of hands, um, this past weekend we were doing a a revival in Deckerville, and the Lord put it on my heart to call all the children forth. And so we had probably 40 children come forward, and we laid hands on them and commissioned them to go and do what Jesus told us to do. Mark 16, go into all the world, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. Yeah. And so we prayed for the for the little ones, anointed them with oil. They went into the crowd, and a 10-year-old girl cast four demons out of this lady. Come on. And a lady come forward and testified that she had so much joy and so much strength. That just goes to show you that it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's not about the person. It's the Holy Spirit yes. and the willingness. It's like she had childlike faith. Like, I'm just going to believe God that I can pray for healing for this person. She didn't even have the words or context for it. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit set that person free. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, but I believe that it had to do with that impartation. Of, I she came it. forward, I prayed for them, anointed them with oil, said, go forth, and then boom, they turned around and went forth, and demons are being cast out. We had 10 people physically healed. I mean, it's just amazing mm. what God does if we allow him to operate, if we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to operate through us. I, mean, I believe that happened to me at the Greg Log event. I, I think I got impartation. Yeah, me too. Because where deliverance was far and few in between, it became rapid. And every Christian has the authority to cast out a demon. But the gift of discerning spirits is an anointing that God gives a person that will accelerate and intensify that ministry. Just like every Christian can pray for the sick, but when God gives the the gift of healing to an individual, it intensifies and accelerates that ministry in their life. And so that's what we want to do is be able to impart to people so that they can walk in that under a supernatural grace. That's what, that's what the gift of the Holy Spirit is. They're grace empowerments from God to bring the kingdom. Hey, Come on, man, that's what it is. That's what it is. Um, you know, and so, you know, that's really, you know, what this conference is going to be about, guys, is, you know, and, and I talked to you about this, too. Like when this whole thing started, I said, Pastor Kyle, I feel like it's even bigger than deliverance. Like deliverance and healing is a piece of the pie. Yeah. But ultimately, I believe God's opening up our understandings that, yes, we're in a war. We're in a, a realm right now where there's opposition and there's enemies and there's demonic forces that we need to be aware of and the authority that we carry in Christ, Yes, that we have the authority to cast these things out and stop them dead in their tracks because they've on. already been defeated. Mm-hmm. And so they're disarmed. They're still here, but they're disarmed. Yes, And so we need to get rid of them. I mean, praise God, we need to make this earth look like Come heaven. On. Yes, in Jesus' <laughs> and name. And that's when Christianity gets fun. People are like, Justin, you got the fire of God. Yeah, man, I'm casting out demons and healing the sick. <laughs> what are you talking about? This thing's real, amen. <laughs> yeah. Bring in the kingdom, man. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm super excited, man. Um, you know. Me too. Yeah, bro. Big time. Is, I, I don't know. I've got something whirling inside of me that I'm just so, I know that there's something strategic the Holy Spirit is going to do through this conference where I don't think. Pastor Greg even knows he thinks he came to Flint and did a deliverance meeting and went back to Tennessee. Yeah. I don't think he knows the ramifications of just bringing that impartation. And so I'm hoping that God will do things in such a way that we'll never even be able to calculate the impact, amen, that it had. Bro, and then I love how we're bringing five different ministries, five different churches, yes, five different leaders in the body of Christ together. It's God's and it's, desire. It's about God's heart, you know, and equipping his people, you know. So that's what it's going to be all about, guys. It's going to be March 8th, 9th, and 10th, March 8th, Friday at 6 o'clock, I believe. Yep. We're going to do worship. Um, we're going to have some awesome Friday, worship. Yep, at 6.30. 6.30. Yep. And, um, and then Saturday is going to be all day. Starting at 10.30 a.m. Starting at 10.30. Food block. trucks for lunch. Come it's on, It's going to be good. So block your calendar off. You're going to want to be here. You are going to want to be here. Make yes. sure you bring a notepad and some notes and your Bible for sure because, there, again, we're going to have Scripture to back up everything that we're saying. We're Scripture people. We're Bible people. Come on. And so, you know, we want to make sure to equip you with tools. And um, then, you know, obviously, 
Saturday night is going to be the mass deliverance service. So we're going to, I mean, every service I think will have ministry. Yep. But that last night, if you know somebody that needs deliverance in any, any session, really, if they can only come Friday, bring them Friday. If they can only come Saturday morning, bring them Saturday morning. But I really encourage you to come Saturday night because there's going to, I believe that Kyle carries a special impartation. Like he, he carries an anointing in this area that is the authority, I believe, in the region, regional authority in this area. He carries that here at Center Point Church. And so I believe that there's just going to be a lot of miracle signs and wonders. It's called the Miracle Auditorium. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. We're doing this conference in the Miracle Auditorium. And so if you need somebody with miracle healing, deliverance, whatever it is that you need, make sure to bring them out. And um, get connected to Center Point Church, man, because y'all are doing some awesome things out here. Thank you. Giving away food, giving away backpacks. Do, I mean, they're always doing stuff. So, yeah, Center Point Church, Pastor Kyle Bailey, get connected to them. It's been awesome, man. Praise God, man. I appreciate the word of encouragement. Miracle Auditorium Come didn't on. originate from me, though. The lady who founded this church, Pastor Bernice Matijic, who was a prophet, she this church went through a miracle revival back in the 50s and 60s, and she named the original auditorium that was over on the east side the Miracle Auditorium. And so this church was founded out of a miracle move of God in the latter reign and uh, charismatic renewal time period. And so we're just wanting to honor the well of revival that's already been here for many decades. And I believe he's just getting started. Come on, man. Amen. It's time to dig <laughs> back into that well. Come on, y'all. Open the wells. It's here. And so, yeah. Um, so hopefully, guys, this gives you a little insight on this conference we've got coming up. You got to hear my brother, Pastor Kyle Bailey, his heart and why he want, why he's so passionate about deliverance. And just seeing all the people get set free, you know, and if you're questioning it and you're saying, you know what, the stuff isn't real or whatever, um, I just encourage you to press you to come in this weekend and yeah. just to see it for yourself. Because really that changed my eyes. You know, when I seen it for myself, it's a difference between hearing somebody, yeah. but then when you come and you see somebody truly get set free, yes, that's a game changer, man. And so, you know, there's nothing like walking in the freedom. Trust me, 14 year drug addict to being completely free. Ain't nobody mm -hmm. going to tell me deliverance ain't real. Come on. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, I just want to thank you guys for joining us. God bless you guys. We'll see you God next time you. at the conference. Thank you, Pastor Kyle, for everything Thanks you for do, bro. Me, Love man. you, man. Love you, too. All right, brother. All right, brother. Bless you, man. God bless you. All right. Man. Awesome.